hello you guys welcome back welcome to today's video we are going to be talking about how to live a quote-unquote christian lifestyle how to live out a life that glorifies god from a very very simple and day-to-day -day practice i have just like a list of things that i feel like is a really easy step into that direction now i'm just going to give you a warning this video and what i'm doing in this video has absolutely nothing to do with what i'm talking about so hopefully you enjoy and get satisfaction from watching others clean because i'm just in a really busy season of life right now and finding 20 minutes to sit down and film a sit down video is really difficult and so breaking it up where i just film what i'm already doing day to day and then find time to actually do a voiceover later when my kids are sleeping is just what is currently working for this season so i apologize for that it's just the only way i'm able to get youtube videos up in this season so just a little disclaimer on that end but i am pulling heavily from colossians 3 and then also james if you have never read the book of colossians or james i highly 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 suggest that and even before continuing on to this video i highly suggest you even just pausing and asking the lord to soften your heart for the holy spirit to just prompt you in where he's calling you um and for you to really be open to the convictions that come with it because i think oftentimes we are what stops us we are the ones getting in the way and we've allowed the enemy to speak so many lies into our our own heads and into our own minds that we truly believe our sins can't be forgiven we truly believe like no i can't change my life like i've been living this amount of time for this amount of time like it doesn't matter like the lord i'm just so far gone there is no one that is unredeemable there is no sin that is unforgivable and those are all lies from hell and so shoot them back literally stand up right now and kick the air because you're going to symbolize yourself kicking the lies that the enemy has spoke of over you and your mind for so long and kicking them right back to hell. Can I get an amen? Amen. All right. So before I start, I, like I said, if you haven't read Colossians or James, I highly suggest that I'm going to read Colossians 3, 1 through 10, because it talks about putting on your new self. And I'm going to be pulling a lot of this because we are just called to be set apart from the world and having put on a new self. And so I'm going to kind of just using scripture, let the, let, let the scripture do the talking. So Colossians 3, 1 through 10. Put on your new self. Then you have been rinsed with Christ. Seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated on the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things that are above, not on the things that are on the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passions, evil desires and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these things, the wrath of God is coming. In these two, you once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put away all anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put on your old self with his practices, but having put on a new self, which is being restored in knowledge after the image of its creator." All right, and then I'm going to jump over to James 4. James 4, war warning against worldliness. What causes quarrels and causes fights among you? Is it not that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. You adulterous people. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend with the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you su suppose it is no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealously over the spirit that he is made to dwell in you? But he gives us more grace. Therefore, it says God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourself therefore unto god resist the devil and he will flee from you draw near to god and he will draw near to you i 
love that last little verse draw near to god and he will draw near to you i don't know about you guys but recently with the way that the world is i'm just going to be very honest now is the time to get right with god now is the time to figure out what the bible says now is the time to see where you are trying to go the clock is ticking and i don't mean to sound apocalyptic i don't mean to sound like all of this but Truly, every day that passes by is a day that we are getting closer to Jesus' return. And so, now is not the time to keep lollygagging. Now is not the time to keep twiddling your thumbs and just play hoo-hoo-ha-ha ha land. Now is the time to get it together. And so, I'm just, I just really want to implore us. Like, we don't have time. Time is no longer on our side. What we do have is Christ and the Bible. And so now it's time to make disciples. And now it's time to live a life that glorifies him. So let's jump in. First thing that I really want to encourage anyone that is listening to this video, be mindful of what you let your ears hear. Be mindful of what you let your eyes see. And be mindful of what you let your heart meditate on. This is so crucial because you have full access and authority as to what you get exposed to. And so if you're allowing certain things into your home, if you're allowing your eyes to see certain things, if you're allowing your heart to meditate on certain things, you will get let astray because your flesh wants to do what your flesh wants to do. And so if you're constantly feeding your flesh with letting your eyes see whatever your eyes desire, if you're letting your ears hear whatever your ears want to hear, you're going to be easily deceived and you're going to easily be led astray. And it is just a very, very fine path to walk down. And so be very mindful and guard your heart and your eyes and your ears. Nava and I talk quite at length about this in our Armor of God study because it is such a crucial piece and such a crucial thing that in the world that we live in today, we need to be doing this because we live in the information world. We can literally open up our phones right now and let our eyes see and hear anything under the sun. And so there's no way for you to quote unquote filter that. There's no way for you to guard that. And so you need to be in charge of that. You need to be in charge of what shows you allow to come on your TV or not on your TV. You need to be very cautious about what you allow yourself to hear and the music you are listening to and what your children are listening to. Um, in this video, I am not going to, because I, I could do this the whole video, but I'm not going to be talking about parenting and mothering um, and a household i'm talking more so as an individual and so if you are a mother then obviously all of this applies to your children too but that is a whole separate video but be mindful about what you are allowing your heart to meditate on the heart is easily deceived the heart is the flesh and so you cannot go about your life living based off of your feelings if you do that you are walking in death if you are like you will be deceived the world's definitions and the world's truth and feelings fluctuate and change every single day and sway with the wind and go this way and then go that way but when your foundation is set on god and his truth and everything he says is true you won't be wavering you won't be unsure of what is what you will know exactly what life is and what life isn't and he makes it super super clear and so be mindful of what you are exposing yourself to. And just a practical thing this week, as you are going about your week, ask yourself this very simple statement. Does this glorify God? What I have found is that it's just so easy to ask yourself the question, does this glorify God? If it doesn't, then you don't need to watch it. You don't need to hear it and you don't need to see it. If it does, then we have to act like Acts 17.11 the Bereans, Paul was teaching them and they were taking everything that they were saying and they were like, okay, yeah, sure, 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 sure. But they took everything that Paul was teaching them and examined it to scripture to see if the things that he was teaching were true. So ask yourself this question, does this glorify God? No, I don't need it. If it does, great. 
Now let's test it and see if it stands up against scripture. Because again, we live in the information age. And although you might be watching something that is a pastor or a podcast or something, you need to have discernment and make sure that what they're saying is actually true. So seek the scripture and test what they're saying. All right, we following? Another little uh, sub point that I'd like to add to this is conversations and your tongue because what you allow in and out is great but then what you are saying is also really important the conversations you're having is super important are the conversations you're having glorifying god are the conversations and words you're saying pointing people back to god are you being wise with your words and if this is an area that you struggle with i highly suggest you read proverbs the entire book of proverbs it's like 31 page uh, 31 verses it's relatively short but i highly suggest anyone starting off their day reading a little bit of proverbs like one or two verses it is just such a humble way to show you how foolish we are like truly every time i read proverbs i'm like wow i'm a fool and then i feel called and convicted and led to use god's word to instruct me on how to be wise the bible makes it very clear what wisdom is and what is not and wisdom from the world is not wisdom fear of the lord is a foundation of wisdom it wisdom prolongs your life fear of the lord prolongs your life and so just reading the proverbs helps us really understand that so what are your conversations looking like are your conversations spent just slandering other people and gossiping about other people are your conversations speaking life I asked myself and my kids this question all day long. What I just said, did that speak life or did it speak death over someone? Did that just bless someone or did that just curse someone? And once we're asking ourselves these questions, it really exposes where our heart is. It really, our tongue exposes what our heart is thinking. So take your words captive. Now, my next point is to take every thought captive. Paul talked about this, and this applies to everything in the way that you are parenting, in the way that you are working, in the way that you are mothering, in the way that you are doing a life. What do your thoughts look like? And what I suggest, another thing to add to your list here is as you're going about this week, write down your thoughts. Because sometimes our thoughts just end up staying in our mind. Sure, we may have tamed the tongue. We've gotten that down. We're not saying these things out loud. But they're still harboring in our mind. The enemy is still allowing these thoughts into our minds. And so what do those thoughts look like? And I only suggest you writing them down because it'll really point and show you what you are thinking. Because sometimes our thoughts just kind of like, maybe we don't really mind much attention to them. But Paul tells us to take our thoughts captive and make them obedient to Christ. And so that's that's really bold because he's even saying like, you don't even be, need to say these things, but what are you even thinking? What you're thinking will end up coming out. Next thing, if you want to have a life that honors God, you need to make sure that you fear the Lord more than you fear people. And this can be really hard to see in a practical sense, but let's think about it. If we read the New Testament, there were so many people who were disciples who were proclaiming the gospel and literally got stoned to death because of it, were thrown into prison because of it, and were completely hated for it. Now, I don't see any of us, like, th that is just so far removed from our reality that we have to ask ourselves, if it got to the point where if I proclaimed that Jesus is Lord, and I knew I would get stoned to death because of it, would I still do it? Because that is how you will know whether you are fearing the Lord or fearing people. Because if you're fearing, whoever you're fearing is who you're serving. So if you're fearing the Lord, you're serving the Lord. If you're fearing people, you're serving people. And the Bible makes it very clear. We cannot have two masters. Either you serve the Lord or you serve the world. Who runs this world? Satan does. And so it, it makes it so clear. Like this world belongs to the enemy. And so if you're constantly trying to please the world, if you're constantly trying to please people, you are serving and fearing them versus the Lord. 
And that is just not a way to live. All right, now the last little segment I want to talk about is living in sin. Romans 6 says that we are dead to sin, but alive to God. So we are no longer enslaved to sin. And we must consider ourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ. And so death no longer has dominion over him. And for the death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, lives to God. And so you must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God. Let no sin therefore reign in your mortal body and to make you obey its possessions. Do not present your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law by, but under grace. So I want to ask you, are you, is there habitual sin that you are living in right now? Is there a sin that seems like you just cannot shake? Is there a specific way of which your lifestyle that you are continuing day in and day out that is just known as a sin that the bible makes very clear as a sin but has such a hold and grasp on you that it seems unshakable the bible makes it very clear that there's some instructions of what to do for that first you need to repent first of all acknowledge what it is as sin and call it what it is but then you need to remember that you are covered by grace and that is the whole reason why Jesus even came and he has forgiven you of that sin. And so do not let the enemy use that as bondage anymore. Do not let the enemy hold that down from allowing you to do what the Lord has called you to do. You need to turn away from that. You are no longer enslaved to sin. So acknowledging that, repent of what that is, confess it to others so they are able to hold you accountable confess it and apologize to those who have been affected by your sin because the biggest thing about sin is that it affects us and it affects every single one around us and so it isn't a thing of like well this just this is just no it affects everyone and affects those who are around you and so confess it repent confess and turn away run away from it and do not let yourself be tempted by it again. The, uh, the Bible makes it very clear that we are to not allow ourselves to be tempted. We are not allowed to, we are, it's foolish to put yourself in a situation where you would be tempted again. It's foolish to let the enemy come in in ways that he has previously. And so set up safeguards, set up guards and rails and things that you are able to do. Set up accountability, have people who will be constantly checking in on you to see how you are doing in x y and z area and have them hold you accountable and pray for you let this bondage become a part of your testimony let this issue become a part of what god is doing and let all the glory be to the lord because that's how he works maybe there is someone five years down the line who is walking in the same exact thing that you have been walking in and they've always thought that they were unredeemable. They always thought that sin was too far or too big. They dealt with it for too long that it's unforgivable. But here you are overcoming that exact thing right now through the butt of the lamb. And you are able to use that later down the line and show them, hey, I was walking through that exact same thing. Look at how God changed my life. Look at what God did. Look at my life now because of Christ. He set me free. I'm no longer enslaved to that sin. And look at how different my life looks now. You have the ability to do the same thing. God can do that for you too. And so let your bondage be a part of your testimony. Let it affect and change the lives of others because that's how Jesus has changed and affected the li your life. I'm going to wrap this up. Are we being fishers of men? Are we are we living out? Are we making disciples? Or are we just comfortably living in the corner of our home and just kind of fearing and doing our own thing? Now is not the time to do that. Now is the time to get on top of rooftops and proclaim that Jesus is Lord and fish all day long. I love you guys. Be blessed.